Coming up, Iowa City feels the burn after a visit from 2020 presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. And later, city council election is rapidly approaching and we have the inside scoop for each of the candidates. We have a scary week of sports ahead of us. But today we talk about football and field hockey. Stay tuned for more. What's scarier than a cold Halloween? A cold and snowy one. How cold and how much snow will we get? Stay tuned for weather to find out. All that and more coming up in this Monday morning edition of DITV News. Don't go anywhere, DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Abby Napolis. Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders visited Iowa City Friday night for the first time since his heart attack in early October. The senator spoke about one of his most popular campaign issues, an end to corporate greed. We are going to have the courage to take on the greed and the corruption of the corporate elite and together we are going to transform our government and our economy so that it works for all of us, not just wealthy campaign contributors. This Friday, Sanders' campaign will also host a, hort, a march against corporate greed in Des Moines. With the city council election coming up this week, DITV will be showcasing each of the three candidates to help you decide where your vote should go. This week, we sat down with Janice Weiner, a formal Iowa Senate candidate looking to snag an Iowa City Council seat. Weiner grew up in Coralville, Iowa, and spent 26 years serving as a U.S. diplomat, an experience that she believes gives her a leg up in the election. So my, one of my approaches is that of a public servant. I've, do, I've done it before, and while you don't obviously take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of Iowa City, the, the, the idea is similar in the sense that I uh, would be working for all the citizens uh, not for any one person, not for any one interest um, or, or, or point of view, but really uh, 360 trying to work for everyone to move the city forward. Weiner spoke about policy she hopes to enact on the council, putting the strongest emphasis on climate change. Renewable energy is just one of those things Weiner hopes to bring to Iowa City, but she is willing to work with the rest of the council to determine the best way to tackle climate issues. The first thing is I want to see what the what city staff comes up with on November 14th, the, their 100-day plan for 100 days after the city council declare a, a climate emergency. I'm very curious to see what all they include in that. Um, I think there there are some there's some low-hanging fruit that we can that that, that we can grab um, in terms of we can't we can't as a city mandate anything stricter than what what um, state and federal regulations um, require, but we can, we, can, we can be creative, we can encourage, we can lead, we can work with the university. Tune in again throughout the week to hear what the other candidates had to say about us before the election. Well, Halloween is on Thursday and we are getting to the end of October, so let's toss it over to Melissa in the weather studio to see how that week is gonna feel for the weather. Thanks, Abby. Today is going to be another cold day. We're going to have a high of 44 degrees with cloudy skies and a 10% chance of rain. As we head into tonight, the temperature will drop to a chilly 28 degrees and we'll have a 100% chance of rain that is also mixed in with some snow. Now let's take a look at the extended forecast. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy with a high of 40 and a low of 29. On Wednesday, it'll be cloudy with a high of 38 and a 50% chance of rain and snow in the evening. On Thursday, on Halloween, there will be a 50% chance of snow throughout the whole entire day and a high in the mid-30s. On Friday, it'll be partly cloudy with a high in the upper 30s. And this weekend, on Saturday, it'll be partly cloudy with a high in the low 40s. I don't know about you guys, but I will not be upset if the snow never comes this week. But if it does, you will definitely see me shedding a tear. Abby, back to you at the desk. Thank you, Melissa. The Iowa City Film Team is partnering with the university to offer wider options for film studies. Both Iowa City residents and students can sign up for Film Scene 101, Fact or Fiction, a four-week special topic cinema course. The class analyzes different styles of documentary films through screenings and discussions led by UI professor Corey Creekmer and Kembrew McLeod. 
Magloria is excited to offer the new course to community members, stating, quote, I like teaching undergrads, but I also like teaching community members for different reasons. One of those reasons is because they are already invested in wanting to learn and often much easier to get them to discuss things, end quote. The program begins tomorrow, but film plan, plans on offering similar courses to the community in 2020. While we are getting into some weather that is in the winter side, we are highly invested in fall sports, so I'll toss it over to the ladies in the sports studio with more. Thanks, Abby. The Hawkeyes are looking to claw back into the battle for the Big Ten West. But first, they had to travel to the east to take on the Northwestern Wildcats. It's spooky season for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and that means the, de the defense is scarier than ever. Chauncey Golston starts the game off with an interception to spark some confidence for the Iowa offense. All eyes were on the Ferentz duo as Iowa's looking to improve their offensive production. However, the Hawks could only find a field goal to take on the early 3-0 lead. The defense came up huge once again, recovering a fumble on their way to their second Big Ten shutout of the season. And this time, Makai Sargent finds the end zone as the Hawkeyes went on to win 20 to nothing and improved to 6 to 2 on the season. And the team was fired up after the shutout. Oh, it's great, and it makes Coach Parker uh, happy. Like we, it makes us happy. But like seeing Coach Parker smile, like that's that's really nice for everybody. Oh, the interception! I was just rushing. I want the work back, and Brady hit the ball. I saw it. I'm like. Oh, okay, it doesn't get any easier than this. And then <laughs> I, I caught the ball. I got tackled, but <laughs> yeah. We got Wisconsin coming up. Uh, I mean, we're both sitting on the same record. Um, really, this game's going to decide who's going to go to the Big Ten West, or I mean the Big Ten. With Iowa's win against Northwestern, the Hawks have reached bowl eligibility, and even though it didn't feel like it after losing to Michigan and Penn State, Iowa is still in the running for the rest. We have Iowa football reporter Lucy Rodine standing by with more. Lucy, what is the Big Ten West looking like right now? So the Big Ten West really comes down to three teams. It's Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. And I know it doesn't feel like it after Iowa lost to Michigan and Penn State, but Iowa and Wisconsin have the same record right now. Wisconsin got upset on the road at Illinois and then got smacked this weekend against Ohio State. And Iowa just has those two losses, so they're both sitting at 6-2 and two on the year. But we keep forgetting about Minnesota. Minnesota is 8-0, and oh, undefeated on the season, and right now they control the destiny in the West. So what does this mean for Iowa? Well, as I said before, Minnesota, they're 8-0. They control what's going to happen. But the thing with Minnesota is, is they haven't played anybody, so we don't really know how good this Golden Gopher team is. In the beginning of the season, they almost lost to Georgia Southern, South Dakota State, and Fresno State. But the last four games, they're winning by an average of 30 points per game, so we don't really know what to expect from this Minnesota team. They still have Penn State and Wisconsin coming into Minnesota and a game with Iowa on the road. Now, if Minnesota is the team we expect them to be, they'll drop two to three of those games. And if that's the case, then Iowa controls their destiny, and it starts with winning on the road in Wisconsin in two weeks. Thank you, Lucy. The University of Iowa field hockey team played their last regular season home game of the year over the weekend. The 8th-ranked Hawkeyes took on the 10th-ranked Northwestern Wildcats at home for senior night. The energy was high, and the Hawks were fired up. It was a slow start for the Hawks as they allowed a goal in the first half, falling behind 1-0. But the Hawks would come back strong, and they scored two goals in the second half to claim the victory and boost their confidence before heading into the postseason. It's been a bit hectic, a bit worrying, but it's just meant so much to me and all the seniors. Like We've had an incredible four-year journey here, and just getting to share today with all the girls, with our family, with just everyone, it's just been incredible. And it's amazing to get the win over Northwestern. They're an incredible team, and we're just really happy. Yeah, I mean, it was a gritty win. Northwestern is a top 10 fantastic team, um, and we really were able to stick to the game plan today. It's just a matter of not if we were going to put a goal on the board. and. We were pressing a bit in the first half, and we really cleaned up our, our final third, kept more possession, um, and really moved the ball well. And that led to two fantastic goals. The Hawks play this weekend in Ann Arbor for the last game of the regular season. Then after that, we'll be sure to keep you updated on their postseason assignment. The football team and field hockey team have been spooking their opponents all season. But come back tomorrow for an update on maybe the scariest Iowa sports team yet, women's soccer. Abby, it's all you. Thank you, ladies. Well, that's all we have for you on this Monday morning edition of DITV News. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news between Monday and Friday. And if that isn't enough of the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out our print edition of the news on Stands Now. For DITV News, I'm Abby Napolis. Have a great day, Iowa City.